Hey everyone, my name is Kirtana and uh, today I'll be talking about what a product manager does in a gaming company. So whenever I tell people uh, that I'm a PM in a gaming company, the first thing they ask me is, um, isn't gaming like a creative field with designers and animators and artists? So, so what, what does such an analytical skill do in a gaming company, right? Today I'll try to answer that question. And also I'll take you through a small journey of what happens behind the scenes when a feature is decided in a game. So before I start, who am I? My name is Kirtana again. I have 10 plus years experience in the industry. I started my career as an engineer and about five years ago, I turned into a product manager. I worked a lot in early stage startups and my last startup called Hyphen, it had a successful exit. So I'm really happy about that. And currently I manage a portfolio of casual games at Zynga. Draw Something is one game that you might have heard of that is in my portfolio. Before I begin, um, who is this presentation for? So I've tried to keep it at a very high level and a very light session. Uh, whoever is interested in product management, whoever is interested in games in general, and whoever is interested in being uh, game PMs, uh, I hope it connects with all of you. And what is in it? I start off with telling what a game is, how do we perceive it, and what happens again, like I said, behind the scenes when a feature is decided. So jumping into the presentation. So what is a game? A game is something that has a simple, satisfying, repeatable activity at its core. When I say that, imagine how many times as a kid you would have played hide and seek. Hide and seek is nothing but a game where there is one person who seeks and there's a bunch of people that hide. And this happens over and over and over again. The only reason that it happens, there is no absolute, absolutely no tangible benefit that is coming out of it. The only reason why you would be doing it is probably because of the joy that you get out of it. Similarly, extend this concept to mobile games or video games, right? Imagine your favorite game. It can be a Candy Crush, it can be a Super Mario. You do the same thing over and over again. Like for example, in Mario, Mario goes through worlds, defeats the enemies and saves the princess, right? But this happens over and over again. While this is happening, there are layers on top of it, which make it more fun to play for a longer while. One of the things that we call as initial hope, it can be as simple as some wonderful first time user experience that you provide to the player. For example, Zynga has this new game called uh, uh, Harry Potter Puzzles and Spells, where the moment you start playing the game, it feels like you are in Harry Potter's world, you, world, you are in Hogwarts, right? And that is how it hooks a player, right? And once they start playing, imagine they start playing, why should they stay in the game, right? Generally, there should be some sort of progress within the game. Either they're crossing levels, either they're building a skill, either they're collecting points, either they're collecting some rewards, whatever it may be. But there should be some sort of progress, which gives a motivation for the player to keep playing. While all this is happening, there should be some moments, some joyful moments or some celebratory moments that keeps the player going, generates some kind of happiness hormones within them. And that makes them feel good about the entire experience. After all, what is a game but an escape from real life, right? So I call this frequent elevated experience. Now, when all of this are put together, that is when you have a successful game. Imagine you have this game. And now let's see when you have a game like this, what does the game team or the PM care about really? So what does a game PM really care about, right? It's very simple. Are the players enjoying my game? Do they really love the game? And once these two are established, then we ask the next question, are they committed enough to the game? In simple terms, what does player enjoyment uh, mean? Are they playing the game enough? Again, this is very, very genre specific. So a simple game like a word game, like wordscapes, five to seven minutes is good enough if they're playing for uh, in a day. Whereas compare it with a game like PUBG or Fortnite, five minutes is nothing for the game. So it is very genre specific. So based on the genre, PMs 
monitor this to see how much are the players enjoying the game once that is established we move to a little bit of a it's not a little bit it's a longer term metric uh, where you see whether the players are coming back again and again into the game so if a player downloaded a game 4 days ago did they come back 3 days ago did they come back 2 days ago did they come back 1 day ago right that shows whether the player is actually having a long term affinity to the game like i said once these two are established we go and ask whether will they spend on the game it can be a direct spend it can be an indirect spend if they are enjoying the game then only they will want to even spend on the game right so if you convert this into pm jargon these become what we call as engagement retention and monetization so every pm looks at these uh, metrics to see how the long term trend of the game is going so also we need to understand that these three metrics are very 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 interrelated so if you touch something on engagement most likely it will touch retention and it will touch monetization right if a player is enjoying your game it is highly likely that they are going to come back to the game and it is highly likely that they are going to spend on the game so i'm going to take a very small example uh, in i'm going to take engagement i'm going to break it down and i'm going to show you how a feature can be planned to impact engagement and how it may impact the other metrics right so let's get into it so what does engagement mean engagement means different uh, different things for different apps and different games but at a high level for a simple game you can assume that engagement means how much are my players playing what are they doing in the game and uh, how hooked are they to the game if you again convert it to jargon how much are they playing simply becomes session time like per session how much time are they spending what are they playing again depends on the type of game you have assume that it's a simple game like a tetris or a word game it means how many levels did they complete in that session and are they hooked to the game how many sessions per day are they playing if they are playing multiple sessions it means that they really like the game right so in game companies this is where the fun begins so we can we can do boring things like funnel optimization to improve the session time to uh, see that people are completing more levels or we can add some fun elements to the game called as meta what is a meta it is a layer on top of the game which makes it slightly more fun to the player at the same time for the pm or the game team it impacts one metric or multiple metrics which they want to be hit that is if implemented successfully right so cool. let's see what are some of the metas that can be used to improve session time in a game so i have picked three examples and uh, i will explain one in detail um but let's start with goals so if you've seen games you would have seen um these uh, this feature called as daily mission or daily goal or daily quest essentially it is a simple feature which has a set of tasks to be done and once each of these tasks are done you get a reward now the way these tasks are designed it is actually a little clever what they do is the first task gets completed as you are doing your normal activity in the game so when this feature gets introduced you complete your normal activity and you are rewarded suddenly and you are like oh this is this is great i didn't do anything i got a reward and then you are directed to a place where there are other tasks and once you go there you see that if you do a little bit more you get another reward and if you do a little bit more you get another reward this is how they increase the session time uh using daily goals right there is another simple mechanic which works really well at initial levels called reward unlock i will go into the details in the next slides but before i do that there's another one which i want to cover which is called as mini games or special events both are a little different but special events are some things that you see in many games where there is a friday event or a saturday event or a christmas event or a halloween event 
what this does generally uh, this is used in games which have a longer lifetime where players stick around for a long time it adds variety into the games it it makes the player um, uh, get a different flavor of a same game it increases session time it increases the retention it increases basically it is targeted to kind of hit different metrics right so that is one way of doing it now like coming back to reward unlock what is reward unlock it is once you finish the normal activity so the example that i have taken here is from toon blast it says that reach level 10 and you open a toon chest or a reward box right as simple as that now the question to ask for a pm is where do you unlock first of all why do you unlock where do you unlock and what do you unlock right for to answer that let's see a simple graph where there are levels played in a session on the x axis and the number of players playing now if you look at this graph you see that it is pretty smooth over here obviously there is drop off you cannot expect all the players to complete all the levels but if you see here there is a steep drop and if you see here there is a steep drop now let's assume that there is an add over here and there is an add over here obviously there will be a higher drop off right because most players do not enjoy watching ads but you cannot really remove ads if this is an ad driven game and that is the main source of your revenue you cannot do that so what can you do so maybe you think okay let's unlock a reward after this so in anticipation of the reward some of these players who will would have dropped off here will continue playing let's see how that can be done so you decide to open a reward at level 8 level 8 is kind of a sweet spot you're not trying to push the player till level 10 which may be a little too late like you're expecting them to play half uh, like uh, five more levels so you plan to do it in somewhere in the middle sweet spot which is level 8 right so if you see here if you see the curve has moved you pushed almost 30000 players to cross this excessive players to cross this which means that 30000 players have watched the ad which is directly ad revenue so you try to improve the session time but you hit the monetization which goes back to my earlier slide where i said everything is interrelated so what happens player comes here in anticipation of the reward and that goal is achieved now there is something else happening there is a drop off here there is a bigger drop off here there is also a drop off here now why did this happen so as a pm you need to ask your question probably is this really the right reward to give away it looks like the players opened the reward they were disappointed and they dropped off even some players probably without this reward they might have continued but the reward was probably so disappointing that they dropped off here so you need to be really careful what kind of reward are you giving is it adding any value to the players game is it giving any sense of novelty to them so you need to know what is what would their inspiration be and how would you reward it at these points right so this in essence in a nutshell what a pm in a gaming company does right they identify problem areas they identify opportunities for growth or solutions to the problem areas they see multiple ways of how you can achieve that goal once they identify the right uh, uh, way to achieve they work with designers game designers ui ux engineers to get the feature implemented once that is implemented they do various ab tests to see what's the most optimized way to achieve the goal if it is achieved great you write a report you tell everyone like what what exactly worked if it did not achieve then also you write a report but you go back to the planning table and you see if it can be optimized further if some kind of variation be introduced in the feature or if it needs to be replanned all over again so in a sense it is similar to what a pm does in any other uh, company not not a gaming company but it's a little more fun because you can add different kinds of metas you can see different behavior in uh, players so it is a little more fun because it is gaming
and you are creating an escape for your players right now given this context let's also understand if you're not a pm in a gaming company how you might use some of the metas that we talked about in your app right so if you've seen a um, lifestyle apps like meditation apps or exercising apps or um, health apps you would have seen goals right these are nothing but an extension of the daily quest or daily goals kind of uh, meta and taking it and putting it uh, on another app similarly snapchat has these streak unlocks like every day you chat you chat more you get another streak icon you use you chat even more it becomes flames it becomes hot it becomes a lot of different things right and i have i've seen personally some of my younger colleagues do it every single day because they don't want to lose the streak icon so this is a twisted way of a uh, reward unlock which snapchat has done really well right so that is also a game meta that has been reused uh special events almost all kinds of apps have different special events right one of the notable examples which i remember which is a real good example of gamification in product is um, google pay which is an india uh, india local uh, google app what they did last year uh, during uh, uh, diwali in india is they introduced an event where if you make payments through google pay you get to collect these different kind of stamps and once you make this collection of stamps you get a chance to win 100000 rupees this was an amazing event which was covered extensively which became a hit you can go read about it they increased the transactions like number of transactions like anything this is again uh, a game meta which being used in a normal app uh, i have covered very simple metas today but i would encourage you guys to go read about the different kinds of meta uh, online uh, there are a lot of them like competition cooperation rival a lot of different types of mechanics which you can adapt to any kind of product right so what does it take to be a game pm uh, the biggest difference between a regular pm and a game pm is obviously able to understand game fundamentals don't try to be an expert at it uh try to be able to uh, communicate with experts called as game designers who lead the design in every gaming company understand what are the popular metrics understand the metas which can impact these metrics understand popular game mechanics uh and the other thing that you can do is play popular games look at the features see why is it there in the first place this will help you understand a lot of uh, background uh so either you can read or play these games and understand right the second thing obviously something that uh is bread and butter for pms is analytical thinking right so when uh, there is a lot of math that goes behind all of these features so you should be able to even before like releasing a feature you should be able to tell in exact numbers what metric is it going to impact and how much is it going to impact by and once the feature is released you need to go and match back and see if whatever your assumption or whatever uh, calculations that you had given whether it matched or not so you need to have a good solid analytical foundation to be able to do this effectively in terms of tools sql and excel is something that everybody every pm has to know so once you think you're ready uh, with all of these background you should research and reach out to gamings which have uh, gaming companies which have a pm focus zynga is one of the pioneers but there are a lot of gaming companies out there who are shifting their focus towards product right finally what i would tell you is <laughs> again keep playing a lot of games and every time ask yourself why am i playing this game the moment you do that you will see what are the elements in the game that are making you play and why did those elements come about what was the thought process behind it what could have been better and you become your own pm <laughs> right so thank you guys for listening to me today um again like feel free to reach out to me this is my email id this is my linkedin address if you have any feedback if you have any questions please feel free to reach out and i'll be able to answer it thank you Thank you.